Okay, in this video we're going to continue on our uh, demonstration of multi-level binary logistic regression uh, using examples from uh, chapter 4 of Heck et al's book, Multi-Level Modeling of Categorical Outcomes. And the data set was downloaded from this particular website right here, so that's just where it's coming from. So this is the data set, and um, in our previous two videos uh, we ran a couple of models. The first video uh, covered an unconditional or null model that included um, no predictors and the second model included uh, three of le fixed level one predictors of students um, identification as being reading proficient or not reading proficient so uh, basically what we're looking at uh, we have a data set with student and some school level data um, reading proficiency is essentially a level one outcome variable uh, with codes of 0 and 1 for not reading proficient um, and reading proficient. Um, the level uh, 1 predictors were uh, low SES or an identifier for being low in SES. Um, so a value of 0 indicates not low in SES, a value of 1 indicates being low in SES. The female variable is basically coded 0 for male, 1 for female, and minority status variable is coded 0 for non-minority, uh, 1 for minority. The students are nested within uh, different schools, and those schools themselves uh, have certain characteristics. So we have a um, essentially a school composition variable uh, reflecting uh, the degree to which uh, the uh, students at the school are receiving uh, additional support services and uh, and so forth. And then uh, we also have a, a, a level two predictor as well in terms of uh, school size. So a value of zero is a non-small school and a value of one is a small school. So that's uh, essentially the, the the way this variable is coded. So what we're going to do in this video, the first uh, demonstration is just going to um, allow the slope for the minority uh, status variable to randomly vary between schools. So in our previous video we included these three uh, variables as predictors of uh, students uh, identification as being uh, reading proficient and uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to allow the slope for the minority status variable to randomly vary and then uh, secondly uh, in, a, in a subsequent step we're, we're going to actually uh, model school level predictors of variation in uh, the intercepts of across schools so that's basically what we're going to do. So the, for the first step, just allowing the slope for minority status to randomly vary, <clears throat> we're going to go to analyze, generalized, um, excuse me, mixed models, generalized linear. And, uh, you know, so basically all of our, our setup is exactly the same um, as it was at the end of the previous video. We have reading proficiency as our outcome, <clears throat> binary logistic regression selected. Under fixed effects, we we include low SES, female, and minor. Um, and then we also are including the intercept. For random effects, uh, now we need to allow that slope to randomly vary. So under uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this uh, box right here, and you'll see it highlights. And now I'm going to click Edit Box. So uh, what we had done before was we were allowing the intercepts to randomly vary across the schools. And we had selected, you know, the, the here's our level two identifier variable, and we were using variance components for the covariance type. So now I'm going to click on minor, and move it over under uh, the the effect builder under main. So we're now going to be allowing the slope for this variable to randomly vary between schools. So when I click on OK, and uh, you know, just kind of looking through a little bit more, you know, everything that we have right here in terms of its specifications is, is exactly the same as it was previously. Um, because these variables are being treated as uh, categorical, uh, you know, I want, you know, I just or, uh, selected the sorting order for the predictors as descending because I tend to prefer to treat the uh, variable, the um, group coded zero as being uh, the reference category or baseline category and the group coded one as the target group. And then the same goes for the uh, target outcome, which is the reading proficiency here. So I'm going to click on Run, and really the you know the output in terms of the you know fixed effects, uh, you know the classification percentage, all that is pretty much the same or very similar to what it was uh, at the end of the previous video. So the main thing I'm going to 
center on right now. It's just a question of uh, whether the slope for minority status, does that exhibit significant variation uh, across the schools? And so the variance estimate for the slope for minority status, you can see right here, is statistically significant. So that suggests then that there may be some type of um, you know, level two predictors that may help to explain the variation in slopes. And so that might argue potentially for the inclusion of uh, cross-level interaction to, to address that question. We also see, again, that the intercepts um, uh, are exhibiting significant variation as well. So uh, again, we might incorporate level two predictors that may help to explain the variation across schools in uh, their intercepts. So the next step, uh, we're going to add in the school composition and school size variables as level two predictors. And we're going to mainly focus on predicting variation in the intercepts. So, we're only going to be addressing you know, this question right here in terms of the variability of the intercepts. So to do that, we'll go to Analyze Mixed Models Generalized Linear and go to uh, Data Structure, uh, excuse me, go to Fixed uh, Fields and Effects and we'll click on Fixed Effects. And I'm going to move this variable over to the main box and you can see it's already a scale variable. So basically higher values on this variable, by the way, are reflecting uh, essentially uh, uh, the, the idea that there's a greater percentage of students receiving uh, some type of additional support services. Um, you know, which uh, according to the description in the book uh, are related to economic status, language background, or other uh, special learning needs. Then you have the small school variable, which I'm going to move over as well, and it's being treated as a factor as well. So basically the group coded zero, but, um, if we go back to the build options, and look at the categorical predictors, then you can see that the, the school that's coded uh, zero is going to be the, um, the baseline group, and that's going to be the non-small school. So there you go. So uh, at this point, I think we've, we've sort of hit on uh, everything at, uh, that we're going to go with. Let me just kind of also highlight one other thing under random effects. You know, when we click on this and go back to edit block, you know, you can see right here it says the random effect covariance type, and that's going to capture the variation in the intercepts and variation in the slopes. So the variance component um, approach is essentially uh, just estimating the variances of those two components. But you know, obviously there are other types of covariance structures that are uh, possible. Um, you know, one might be an unstructured uh, covariance matrix, which would essentially uh, model the variances uh, for those two parameters as well as the covariance between them. But we're going to stick with uh, just the, the general variance component and assume that the correlation or covariance between the um, intercepts and slopes is zero. Um, so we'll click on OK and then on a Run. And so here's our output. And uh, so you can see right here that um, once again, here's our classification uh, table, kind of giving us a, a breakdown of uh, you know the accuracy rates in terms of um, you know what um, uh, accuracy and pre uh, prediction. You can see over here, you know, in terms of the observed, uh, you know, uh, those that were reading proficient versus non-reading proficient, and predicted. So predicted reading proficient, pr predicted non-reading proficient. So basically, you know, 90, uh, roughly. 91% of those who were uh, reading proficient were, pr were correctly predicted by the model to be reading proficient. But when you look at the non-reading proficient uh, students, um, the model actually only correctly predicted about 32.8% of the time. So, uh, you know, these, you know, this part of of the output is really reflecting accuracy. And then uh, the other part is kind of reflecting um, misses in terms of uh, predicting group membership. So when we scroll down <clears throat> and look at our uh, fixed coefficients here, you can see that, um, you know, again, this coefficient is negative. And remember the coding, you know, basically 0 is non-low SES, 1 is low SES. So the fact that this coefficient is negative and the fact that this value right here is less than one is just basically indicating that students who were identified as low in SES um, exhibited a less likelihood of falling of uh, being identified as being reading proficient. 
Uh, this coefficient is positive, and you can also see that the odds ratio is greater than one. And so in this case, it's indicating that you know students who were uh, female uh, uh, exhibited a greater likelihood of being reading proficient than the students who were male. When you look at minority status, this coefficient is negative, and uh, again the odds ratio is less than one. So you know pretty much count on this this relationship right here. So a negative log odds. Um, is going to be associated with an odds ratio that's less than one. A positive uh, log odds um, or uh, regression coefficient um, um, uh, reflecting the scaling on, on log odds is going to be uh, associated with uh, uh, odds ratio that's greater than one. So you can see the connection right here. And so basically students who were identified as minority status, which is the target group, uh, were less likely um, to um, exhibit reading proficiency than the students who were um, non-minority. So you can see the, the negative regression coefficient right here. So when we look at the school comp composition variable, <coughs> you can see that you know this coefficient is uh, negative, and uh, essentially what that's capturing is the notion that you know in schools that were that involved a greater percentage of students receiving uh, special services, um, you know if you were in that school, you were less likely to exhibit uh, to be um, uh, identified as being reading proficient than those uh, than than uh, than students in schools who are um, who uh, had less um, services uh, rendered to them. Um, so you see that this level two predictor was statistically significant, and again, there's the odds ratio here. And then when you look at the uh, small school variable, um, again, this is just basically um, uh, irrelevant, and this this coefficient here is just reflecting a, co a comparison between the non-small school, which is coded zero, and the small school, which is coded one. So you can see that. Uh, by virtue of this coefficient being positive, and you also the odds ratio being greater than one, this is indicating that students who were attending um, a small school um, were more likely to be identified as reading proficient than students uh, attending uh, the not small school or basically a larger school. So, um, but you know, when you look at the each of the predictors, you can see that you know SES was a significant predictor. Uh, the female variable was a significant predictor. Minority status was a significant predictor. These were all level one predictors right here. Uh, the school um, composition uh, predictor was also a significant predictor. This is actually a level two predictor of the variation in intercepts across schools. So once again, um, if you uh, you know students attending schools with uh, that are uh, providing uh, more services uh, or a no way of putting it is the students were kind of receiving more uh, services or additional support services uh, due to economic status, language background, or other special learning needs. Um, that's pretty much verbatim from the book right here. Um, that th those students were less likely to be identified as reading proficient than school than students who were attending schools uh, where uh, those services were uh, rendered less uh, frequently or less often. Um, and then uh, basically uh, the, the small school variable or predictor variable right here, um, you can see right here that it was not statistically significant at the 0.05 level. But you know, I mean it's it's kind of in that near significant range if you if you know, if you were testing a directional hypothesis, um, if you're just testing a two-tailed test, and clearly that would be non-significant. But you know, basically again, the coefficient is indicating that students um, attending uh, a small school uh, tended to have a little bit uh, greater likelihood of being uh, identified as reading proficient than students at a um, non-small school or basically a larger school. So scrolling down <coughs> and looking at the uh, random effects, you can see right here that uh, when it comes to the variance estimate for the intercept, uh, it is now dropped to non-significance. So uh, basically by incorporating those level two predictors, uh, it looks like uh, we have uh, explained um, uh, a good bit of variation in the uh, intercepts uh, across schools, and so um, there you go. Now we still have uh, significant um, variation uh, when it comes to the minority status uh, regression slope, and so you know conceivably then we could still 
identify potential level two predictors that would help to explain the, the variation in those slopes.